All right, I'm the Flat Rate Master. Today, we're talking about common mistakes on hookup on scopes, back probing versus piercing, and triggers. All right, so we're gonna start out with back probing versus piercing. I know people are gonna get up in arms about this one. So, piercing probe versus back pinning. T-pin, dedicated back probe, whichever. A couple issues with back probing. One, you're trying to make sure if you've got a signal dropping out, what happens if this T-pin gets jostled? You know, you move it all of a sudden, it makes, doesn't make contact, Oh, well, well there, there's my problem right there. Except your T-pin or your back probe got moved and you lost connection. Another thing that can happen, and this happens a lot that people don't realize, you have an intermittent connection between the connector and the sensor, and by you sticking a T-pin in there, you kind of shove that connector in a little bit and you fix your problem. That happens a lot. GM is famous for it. Terminal fretting. Basically the connector loses a little bit of tension and doesn't make good contact. Multiple fixes from General Motors, from special dielectric grease to depinning and repinning and all sorts of stuff. But it happens. You get in the real world, you get a connector that moves around too much and those little clips, those little tension pins start to lose tension. And by shoving your T-pin your T pin or your back probing pin in there, you just shoved it in and you got a better contact. All of a sudden your broke car isn't broke anymore. That's why I'm a big believer in piercing probes. Now I know a bunch of guys are gonna be screaming at their screen. Liquid electrical tape, fix the hole, it's not hard. When you pull it off, you got a pretty obvious hole right there, you fix it. As long as you fix it right, what's the big deal? But my point of that is a piercing probe is not gonna intermittently lose contact. That's why I prefer it for diagnosis on possible connectors that have issues because you know, you're tying into a wire instead of tying into a connector that may be the issue. So, I'm sorry, they're not the devil. They're actually a much better connection than back probing. Some common issues. I figured I'd go over this just, you know, see some of those issues. One is what I just talked about, poor connection. You know, shoving it too far in, shoving it not far enough, Piercing probes, that's all I can tell you. Fix your wire though. But piercing probes, that fixes that issue. Another issue is poor grounds. Your scope relies on a reliable source of ground. And we're gonna kinda show it here in a minute what a poor ground can do for your signal. It, it can make it really bad. So let's look and see. So now don't get too excited. Truck's off. And this is just hash. Now I'm teed into the center pin of my mass airflow sensor on my truck. Now, as you can see, I've got a good signal. I'm on my mass airflow sensor. It's just a, a signal to use. As you can see, I just disconnected the ground. See how my scale is no longer close to correct? So I have a poor ground and my signal is not where it should be. This is what happens on a poor ground. 
Watch when I hook it back up to a real ground. All of a sudden my signal is now the correct amplitude. Now we're only using this as an example, but a ground is very important to make sure that you have a good ground. Clean off bare metal if you have to, but make sure you have a good ground. Now next, let's talk triggers. Let's go to 200 volts. Now trigger is basically A trigger is basically a way to see something on the screen. Come on. So if I go up to 200 volts, now on the Pico, do you see anything on the screen? If you set a trigger way up here, Now, I've got the trigger set at like 100 volts. If you notice, my screen's not doing anything because the scope isn't seeing a signal, so it's not triggering the scope. Now, watch what happens when I turn to auto. See, right now, I've got my trigger set a little higher than my signal, and if this was a snap-on, you wouldn't actually see a signal. But if you've got it down here, what are you seeing? Nothing. So all a trigger does is basically set it so you can see it. But if I move the signal down here, the trigger, well, that's way too far. So now I've got it set, so my trigger sets. So what happens is that trigger point, it makes the scope show the waveform that's happening at that level. If you use a trigger and you're outside of this range, on a, a lot of other scopes, nothing will show up. Like a snap-on, you set a trigger at the wrong range, it will not show up. You'll have a blank screen with nothing showing up. When I start a capture, I want no trigger. And then once I've decided I like the picture I'm getting in, Then basically you can see I put a trigger in and the signal is still on the screen. It doesn't scroll past because as it's recording. See, as you, as you can see, I've got the trigger set. So when it peaks up, it shows it. But if I go up here, it only shows it when it peaks up there. And I'm at the range, so I can't go any higher on this capture. But like if I go right here, see how it changes how it displays it? See, it's only gonna display for a trigger if it's in the capture itself. That's why you wanna be careful with triggers. They trigger the picture. Now what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna set a 50, mo 50 volt Trigger's out of range. But I'm gonna go ahead and start up the truck. See, and as you can see, I've got nothing on the screen even though I'm in that five volt range. If I come over here, 
I set an auto trigger and all of a sudden my data pops up. That's the importance of a trigger is now if I go back here and set a trigger in manual, I'm back up out of the screen and I can't view anything. See again, I'm in the voltage range, but until I get my trigger all the way down, I've got no signal. That's the importance of a trigger. And that's why I tell you don't set a trigger until you see your signal on your screen. Because let's just say I turn off my trigger. No trigger, exit. But here, I put it at 200 volts. I've still got a signal. I just know I need to come down to a different scale. And then I can come in, set my, set my trigger however I want it, and then I can view my, my tr signal the way I want it, and it stops, it triggers the picture on the screen. Hope you like this, hope you like this trigger lesson. Back probing versus piercing and the issues of grounds. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this on scopes, make sure and subscribe. If you don't like the video, maybe you think piercing probes are the devil, give me a thumbs down. Comments are always appreciated, and as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.